Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how oh, I hear Blue Monday. Got to work, plan to sleep all deep. Here come to It me. is, thank God it's Monday, TGIM, I'm here for you live. How can anyone take these many days off with what's going on in the world? I don't know. I don't know. The world is burning. The border is being overrun by tubercular-ridden individuals, and the media won't even report on it. Scabies are spreading amongst the Border Patrol. Uh, the media won't report on it. It's amazing to me how far they will go to support this man's crazed agenda, which is why I'm not going to talk about this man's crazed leftist agenda. I found an article this morning that I want to talk about. In fact, I found a few of them that have nothing to do with Obama. Thank God. One in five high school seniors smoke a hookah. Do you know what I'm talking about? 20% of high school seniors smoke a hookah. Many of you don't know what a hookah is. It's a water pipe from the Middle East, traditionally from the Middle East. And it involves smoking flavored tobacco from a large water pipe. They either smoke tobacco or they smoke marijuana in it. And it was a big, big uh, group, 15,000 kids aged 18 in the study. And they found that 18%, or almost one in five high school seniors, had smoked a hookah within the 12 months prior to being surveyed. Now, why should that matter to the average listener of this average nation? Why? In New York City, there are hookah bars. In America right now, the idiot children are being told that marijuana is a healthful herb when it's one of the most dangerous substances on the planet. Yes, it is. One of the most dangerous of all substances on the planet is marijuana. Now, I realize this is going against the tide because you've been brainwashed into thinking it's wonderful for you. And the more you will defend it, the more I know you're addicted. So don't call me on that. I don't want to hear from marijuana heads. Marijuana will set your life back 20 years, but you don't know that. You must live your life forward and only look backwards. Only in looking backwards can you understand what damage it's doing to you. Now, I don't even want to talk about that. I just want to explain to you how Obama and the Democrats get away with their lies. It's because most of the country is on medication. The seniors are on hookahs, and the senior citizens are on antidepressants, slinging bags of dog waste. They don't know what's going on around them. They don't care. I saw an article today that by 2045, the year 2045, the top species will no longer be humans. They will be computers. It was an article about artificial intelligence. And there's no legislation today regarding how much intelligence a machine can have, how interconnected it can be. And the writer says, look at the exponential trend of computers today. And we will reach the time frame that most experts have been predicting in science fiction. And you'll see that the top species will no longer be humans but machines. And these are the words of Louis Del Monte physicist, entrepreneur, and author of The Artificial Intelligence Revolution. And he gave an interview on the subject. And he said at, the cer at a certain point, the machines will view humans as an unpredictable and dangerous species. He believes machines will become self-conscious and have the capabilities to protect themselves. He believes that they might view us the same way we view harmful insects. He may think, uh, the, the machines may think that humans are a species that is unstable, creates wars, has weapons to wipe out the world twice over, and makes computer viruses. Hardly an appealing roommate. And he said he wrote a book about this as a warning. As a, as a warning. And he said artificial intelligence is becoming more and more capable, and we're adopting it as quickly as it uh, appears. He said a pacemaker operation is quite routine. But it uses sensors to regulate your heart. Now, here's a shocker. A 2009 experiment showed that robots can develop the ability to lie to each other. Let me repeat that. An experiment showed that robots can develop the ability to lie to each other. It was run at the Laboratory of Intelligence Systems in the École Polytechnique Federale of Lausanne, Switzerland. And the experiment had robots designed to cooperate in finding beneficial resources like energy and avoiding the hazardous ones. 
Shockingly, the robots learn to lie to each other in an attempt to hoard the beneficial resources for themselves. Del Monte, the scientist, said the implication is that they're also learning self-preservation. Whether or not they're conscious is a moot point. That's a very important article. And it leads us to a topic I would like to discuss with you. And that is how committed you are to devices in your life and what it's doing to you, how technology is affecting you on a daily basis. You know that you are in front of a computer screen or on your iPhone all day long. You know that every few seconds you're checking your iPhone for a message, usually a meaningless message, a worthless message. It's nothing but a group of yentas talking about where they went shopping. I walk down the street and I see girls walking around with their, their hand around a bag and the other hand in front of them. It's, a, it's amazing they don't walk into a car. So I'm going to ask you this. Are you addicted to technology? Do you feel that you're losing touch with reality as a result? And what techniques are you trying to use to deter using technology in your life? For example, my producer went to dinner with his friends the other night. And he said, we all must put down our iPhones right now. And the first one who touches their iPhone pays for dinner. And he said, as a result, they were able to talk to each other. I thought that was very interesting. I thought it was very interesting. And I think it's worth talking about. 855-400-7282. There's another article that caught my attention to show you where I'm at where my head is at. We're talking about technology, artificial intelligence. This disturbed me. It's on my website. I found it on my own website on michaelsavage.com. In England, some university academicians are making the argument that pedophilia is normal for males. I knew this day would come. I knew this day would come. In England, they're arguing that pedophilia is natural and normal for males. The presentation said pedophilic interest is natural and normal for human males. It says at least a sizable minority of normal males would like to have sex with children. Normal males are aroused by children. Normal now. Notice the word normal. Where did this come from? Was it in the back of a porn store in the 1970s? Was it from the despicable group Nambla? No. Was it from an underground website? No. The statement that pedophilia is natural and normal was made not three uh, decades ago, but last July. It was not made in private, but one of the central statements of an academic presentation delivered at the invitation of the organizers to many of the key experts in the field at a conference held by the University of Cambridge, England. Now, we would expect such things to come out of England. We've long known that they're weak, that the men are all weak in England. We all know that aside from the soccer thugs, there is no England anymore. Other presentations by these psychotics included, quote, liberating the pedophile, a discursive analysis. See, they always mask their perversion and filth with highfalutin words. Uh, another one of the topics of the sick degenerates at this university was, quote, danger and difference, the stakes of hebophilia. Many of you don't know what hebophilia is. Uh, it's not about liking people of the uh, Hebrew, Hebrew faith. Hebophilia is the sexual preference for children in early puberty from 11 to 14 years of age. Another attendee at this conference of sickos was a man named Tom O'Carroll, a multiple child sex offender, longtime campaigner for the legalization of sex with children, children, and former head of the Pedophile Information Exchange. He said, wonderful. It was a rare few days when I could feel relatively popular. See, now, last week in England, they convicted Ralph Harris, and uh, uh, I think he was a child entertainer, and the, and the nation of Britain went into a, an anxiety state about child abuse in the 80s. But unnoticed was the amount of child abuse being promulgated right now in England. So I'm going to ask you a simple question. Not do you think is pedophilia, is pedophilia normal, because we all know how sick it is. I'm going to ask you, if you were a victim of pedophilia and you're an adult today, how did it affect your life? Because I want the world that listens to my show, my universe of listeners, to tell their story so that these sick degenerates, these sick degenerates can be put back in the boxes that they came from. These sick degenerates, before they normalize pedophilia, which they're going to do, 
If I told you 50 years ago that there'd be a thing called gay marriage, you would have said, I'm crazy. You said the world could ne would never accept it. The very same forces for redefining what is acceptable in our society or what is the norm are now pushing the envelope and demanding that pedophilia be redefined as something normal. So if you care to sound off on this pedophilia nonsense, you can do so. Many adult pedophiles say that boys actively seek out sex partners. Then they say that childhood itself is not a biological given, but an historically produced social object. You understand where they're coming from, don't you? And this is why fathers listening to the show have to pay careful attention. You must pay careful attention to what I am saying. These sick throwback degenerates are everywhere around you. They're in the universities primarily, but they're around you. And they will damage your child, they'll damage your son, they'll damage your daughter for life. And that's why you as a father must become the godfather of your own children. Society will not protect you. Just as this administration has broken the borders and is committing a crime on a daily basis by ushering in hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens who will never be productive members of this society, they're going to be wards of the state, and I can prove it because the man behind it all, Obama, is demanding $2 billion of your tax dollars to take care of these <clears throat> non-citizens. I'm warning you that this society will never protect your children. It never has and it never will. Now you understand why the father is so important in the family. Now you understand why in past days, honor was the most important thing in a family. A man was willing to go to prison to protect his honor and the honor of his family. A man was willing to kill to protect his children. A man wouldn't say, oh my, you shouldn't have touched my child that way. He would have done something pretty severe to anyone who hurt his child. And so should you understand what's going on in the society, you'll understand what's required of you to protect what's yours, what you've brought into this world, because they're defenseless. And right now we have the wolves, the psychotic, psychopathic wolves circling your child in the universities, arguing that pedophilia is normal, that boys want to be molested by older men. If you think this is something new, you're mistaken. In Roman times, it was quite common. And that's where Christianity came in. Christianity put an end to this kind of disgusting behavior. Now you understand why they're trying to burn down the church teachings. Now you understand why Christianity is more important today than it ever was. Now you understand what the battle is all about. It's about your little boy. At the end of the day, it comes down to your innocent little boy. The wolves would like to take that little boy and play with it. The wolves would like to take your little girl and play with it. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you understand how fast we have melted down as a society? Do you understand what you must do in order to protect your children? First, have knowledge. First, understand what's going on. This is the Savage Nation. It's not a throwaway show. It never is. It's the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-400-7282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. SwissAmerica.com. So they're trying to, uh, when I say they are, I mean uh, many in the academic establishment, trying to push the boundaries of the accept acceptability of child sex. And they're arguing that pedophilia is natural and normal for young boys. And you say, this is just an obscure article. It's not going to happen. What you don't understand is that the left wing believes that sex by or with children is just another repressive boundary to be swept away. The left wing says sex by or with children, your child, your daughter, your innocent little boy, maybe you just gave birth to a little boy or a little girl, and you think you're a liberal, I'm warning you that to the radical left that is now running America behind closed doors, one of their agenda items is to argue that sex with children is just another repressive boundary to be swept away like homosexuality was and gay marriage and, 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 and straight marriage. 
This is what's going on in academia. Don't say I didn't warn you. They're saying that anyone who argues against this is a prejudiced person and is prejudiced against child sex. If you have a prejudice against sex with children, you're a bad person. And the books that are being written are aimed at social workers, community workers, probation officers, and child care workers. Dr. Taylor wrote that the public generally thinks of pedophiles as sick or evil men who lurk around school playgrounds in the hope of attempting unspecified beastliness with unsuspecting innocent children. He assured his readers that that was merely a stereotype, inaccurate and un unhelpful, which flew in the face of the, quote, empirical realities of pedophile behavior. So just as sitcoms now routinely show uh, men living with men and you've accepted it, women living with women and you've accepted it, and then the uh, canned laughter comes in, they're now working to make sex with children acceptable to you. You say it's not true. It is true. And I'm going to ask you to come on this show and explain what it did to you so that you can show arguments to those who are arguing that pedophilia is healthful and normal. WMAL in Washington, D.C. Gene, you're the first up. Go ahead, please. Tell your story. Hello, Michael? Yeah, make it quick, though. I have only a minute. Yes, yes sir. Um, just wanted to say that that can't be anything further from the truth. Um, I was a victim of it from a close member of my family, and what it does to a human being, especially a child. I think as a child, you have natural thoughts about sex as you hit your teens, and that's natural to make you into the adult that you need to be. But for them to misread it and to twist it into something that makes sense for a pedophile is absolutely disgusting. Uh, it rips, it rips your, your soul apart. It leaves a hole inside of you, and you go on to life thinking that you've done something so horrible and so wrong. That's and right. It makes the child feel like the child is wrong. The child feels dirty. The child feels like the uh, evil one. Yes, my friends, pedophilia is a crime that should be punished by death. It should never be acceptable. In any sane world, it will never be acceptable. But with the radical left now running our culture, anything is possible. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Here's some news related to the topic. Just today, Monday, Pope Francis begged forgiveness from the victims of clergy sex abuse as he held his first meeting with several abuse survivors. The Vatican quoted Pope Francis as expressing personal sorrow in his homily at a private mass with six victims for the sins and grave crimes of clerical sex abuse against them. So I've raised the topic of pedophilia outside of the church scandal because rife in academia right now is a movement to normalize pedophilia sex with children. And rather than going on and talking about the psychotics who are behind this, rather than telling you that the American Psychiatric Association, which is filled with some of the most mentally deranged people on the planet, in my opinion, there was a proposal to include sex with children as a disorder. As a disorder. Now, it was defeated, but it was argued and almost won. That it's not a, a moral crime, it's just a disorder. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that, watch out, they're going to be pushing this very rapidly soon because of the meltdown of our culture as a result of the atheist in the White House. When have you last seen Obama go to church? When have you last seen him hold a Bible? When have you last heard him use the word God? He is God. He doesn't need to refer to God. He is God. He's a God unto himself. And so if you think an individual, a leader, has no um, impact upon the people, you're mistaken. Even if the leader is doing it for show only, it's very important that they show that respect for God, even if it's just for the people's sake. But he won't even do that. And so we're talking about you as a victim of pedophilia. I want you to come before the audience of the Savage Nation. You hide your name, of course. We're not asking you to disclose yourself. And I want you to tell the world what it did to you as a person, and how it affects your everyday life. And the reason I'm doing it is to build up an armamentarium against these sick, degenerate academicians and others who are trying to push this. It's that simple. So, Jill on WABC, thanks for stepping forward on the Savage Nation. Why don't you tell your pedophilia story? Well, I was 
five years old. My parents were divorced, and my mother married my stepfather, and uh, she became pregnant. And basically, my stepfather decided I would be a good substitute for my mother. Oh. Um, it only lasted about a year. My older sister caught us. Uh, my mother left my stepfather only for a brief amount of time, and then we returned to live with him. And uh, I, as a small child, didn't realize anybody really knew about it. I sort of mm. buried it and thought it was my secret. And believe me, the secret and the hatred of my stepfather ate me alive mm. my whole life. So now, uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to dwell on this. Did, did it affect your ability to meet a man and get married? I've been married three times. Uh huh. Now, do you think that your inability to maintain a relationship, of course, is related to this psychic damage, psychological damage? I do because I think I choose the wrong people. Oh, uh, now, okay. This is intriguing to me, and I'm sure it will be to my listeners. You seek out people who what look like your stepfather, or what? Yeah, as a matter of fact, in a couple of cases, that's true. Yes, yes. And do and do, that's that's really really amazing. So so you made these mistakes. You looked for men who were like your stepfather. They looked like that. He, they looked like him. Well, they're also people who are on the outside of society. Uh, I don't mean that as a moral judgment, but let's say more actors, uh, musicians. Um, uh, I don't seem to go for people who would give me um, a steady life and make me feel like I had high self-esteem. I tend to go towards people who are very egotistical um, and because uh, I feel less than, I believe. Hmm. Well, you seem to be quite knowledgeable about yourself. Have you been able to alter your behavior in any regard? Well, yes. I, I had a lot of help because I did become an alcoholic. Well, I am an alcoholic. And I did go to treatment, and the 12-step program helped me a lot. Even though I'm not involved with that program anymore, I have managed finally to stay sober. It's very sad. I guess, Jill, what you're saying is what I'm trying the audience of my program to understand is that this is not a laughing matter. This is not to be taken lightly. Sex with children will destroy them for life. Right. Yes, I, I believe that's true. And you can recover to a certain extent, but I feel... L let me give you some help here. I'm going to give you some help here. I'm going to quote Sigmund Freud, the greatest mind in the history of psychiatry, who has been debased by the same forces that have tried to drive, drive God uh, out of America. They've tried to drive some of the greatest minds of our entire life out of our minds and put in these lesser fools... Uh, excuse me, great, great fools to replace them. So they drove Sigmund Freud out of, uh, out of the uh, textbooks of psychiatry saying he didn't know what he was talking about. Sigmund Freud wrote that if you awaken one day and find out that you can only crawl on one arm and one leg, meaning the other arm and leg are gone, he said then you crawl on one arm and one leg. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Now I want to tell that to the, to the people listening to the show, many of whom are broken. And they're seeking some kind of answers, whether it be through the radio show or <clears throat> in other ways. They tune in and out of the show figuring, I don't know why they're listening. It's not just about uh, politics. They're looking for something else. They're looking for something else, and I know it. And the something else is the wide knowledge I have from the many years of reading and the many years of studying and the many higher degrees I have, and the many books I've published. Although I'm not a psychiatrist, I've read widely in, psych in psychology. I've read all of Jung, all of Freud all of Adler. I know all of the psychiatric literature of those days. You say, well, we've gone way beyond it. No, we haven't gone way beyond it. No, it's like going back and looking at the great masters in painting. It's like looking at great art and then saying we've gone way beyond it because someone smeared garbage on a canvas and sold it for $35 million. It doesn't mean it's a superior painting any more than <clears throat> modern psychology means it's superior to that of, of, of uh, Freud and Jung. So the point I'm making is <coughs> some of the writings, excuse me, were so insightful that they're, they're made for the ages. They were not made for the time. And so when Freud wrote, if you wake up one day and find out that you're so damaged that you could only crawl on one arm and one leg, then crawl on one arm and one leg. 
That is so comforting to know in an age when everyone is seeking to be perfect, is it not, Jill? Absolutely, yes. And I, I feel I've, go, I've moved on with my life, and, and in some areas I've been very successful. But, Jill, what I'm trying to say to my audience is none of us are perfect. We're all crawling like a bug sprayed with raid. And we all pretend that we're gods. We all pretend we're perfect. It's good to seek perfection. It's good to be the strong man or the strong woman. It's good to try to be a, a god or a goddess. But we're never going to achieve it because there's only one god above us, and he doesn't like competition. He made us imperfect, and he made us fallen angels for a reason. That doesn't mean we should then dwell on our weakness. Oh, no, by all means, try to be strong. But you're never going to achieve perfect strength is my point. And when you realize that you're never going to achieve perfect strength, that you can only be what you can be, and you can only be so good as you can be up to a certain point, that's also good enough. That's also good enough to be a person. And unfortunately, a lot of kids who are, who are affected by pedophilia try to be perfect. Did that affect you? Were you a perfectionist? Yes, yes, I'd have to say that I am. But did you drive yourself trying to be perfect at everything you did? Well, I think... Especially when it comes to men, I try to be perfect. I see. In order to, pl in order to please the, the stepfather. Yes. And make him stop hurting you. Well, I think to, I feel guilty about the hatred I have for him. I think. So. Oh, well, no, no. Don't ever feel guilty about hatred. Let me tell you right now. Anger is a very important emotion. It's a very healthy emotion if it's directed at the right person. Is he still living? No, no. He's been deceased for 20 years. Do the people around him know what he did to you? Only my sister and my husband. Well, you know, sometimes it's best to let sleeping dogs lie as well, Jill. I think that uh, 20 years later, although you're still living with the pain sufficient to have called the radio program to talk about your pain of having been a victim of child sex abuse um, more or less it's better to let it go at this point is it not absolutely but I thought I might help people and definitely help stop this idea where this is normal and is not going to hurt children that's really that's, why that's my Jill that's why I did the show you know I gotta I gotta confess to you <clears throat> we had many other topics to discuss today and I ran this by my younger producers. They're all in their 20s. They said, don't do the topic. It's too painful. We don't want to hear it. I ran it by a very smart woman. She said, don't do this. She said, it's, I wouldn't listen to it. It's too painful. And I said, no, I'm going to do it because, A, it interests me greatly. B, I think we can stop the pain in many people who are listening to, to realize they're not alone. And three, maybe, just maybe, we can defend one little innocent child downstream from some sick, evil predator. You know? Yeah. Jill, thanks for listening. So th there it is. There it is. I mean, I want you to listen to the show today and understand it's not going to be political every day in my life. It cannot be. Obama, as evil as he is, and he is evil, make no mistake about it. If you want me to define evil, I will. That's a man who wants to transform a society that was imperfect, but the best society the planet had ever seen, with more opportunity for more people than ever seen on the earth before. He wants to transform that into what? No, this evil community social worker is pure evil, but he's not the sun, the moon, and the stars. And I'm not going to let his, his shadow cast an umbra on all of science, all of psychology, all of poetry, all of art, all of literature, and all of everything else. He is not that important. Darn it. He's just not that important. And the shadow that he casts will one day disappear like a dark cloud over this land. I don't know one sane person who currently works for a living, who is not depressed because of what this evil man is doing to this country. I don't know one person, I don't meet one person, and I'm talking about people tops in their field, people who've killed themselves their whole life to achieve something. Every one of them sees what this shadow is doing to this country. There's not a man from a supermarket checkout clerk to a man who had a chain of cancer centers who does not see what this evil man is doing to this country. Almost like an evil force, him and Eric Holder and the four invisible horsewomen of the apocalypse and their intent. They have no idea how far this will go, especially since we have no opposition party. But they are not the sun, the moon, and the stars. Life must go on. 
even in the darkest of times, there must be music. Even in the darkest of times, there must be poetry. Even in the darkest of times, there must be art. Even in the darkest of times, one must live. And that's why I say I cannot let these evil forces overshadow everything else on this radio program, or else I would not be able to do the show. There is no reason for me to get up and do the show anymore if all it's going to be is about these evil influences on this society. And on the world, by the way. They've wrecked everything they've touched. There's not a single achievement of this administration. Not a single achievement to the positive. It's all negative. They're taking a wrecking ball to everything around the planet and getting away with it because there is no media and no opposition party. We know that. And so that's why I'm talking about this topic. This is very important. The children, I look at them. I see people having children everywhere. I see pregnants, pregnant women and babies. And I look at them, I almost start to, to weep. I say, my God, what kind of world are they bringing these children into? I see the wolves of Islamofascism growling and ripping people apart around the planet. And I see little white babies walking around with mothers putting them on corners to sell lemonade here in the, in the lily-white suburbs north of San Francisco. Like suddenly it's, it's 1950 and it's a Life magazine cover. And I say to myself, these children are going to be victims their whole life. They're going to be enslaved. They don't even understand what's coming. You've got an evil administration bringing in 300,000 illegal alien women and children who will not work. They're not being brought here to work. They're not going to pick lettuce. They're not going to clean houses. They're being brought in as welfare recipients. Why? Why would a sane society bring them in? What is the intent well, the intent is quite clear. It's to make the country into a third world nation. He wants to level the entire society. They are diehard communists, all of them. And they're demonic, and they're powerful, and they're strong. And so I look at the children, and I say, oh, my God, what kind of future are these children going to have? So I say, well, what can I do about this? Well, I try to warn their parents. The parents are oblivious, most of them. They don't know what's going on around them. They think because they went to college and they make $75,000 a year that they're smart or 100000 a year or 125000 a year or they inherited money from their mothers, uh, whatever. But the children are being brought into a world where they're going to be slaves. I don't mean slaves in chains necessarily. I mean societal slaves. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation. I'm going to take the song I asked for because we have a fill-in uh, board operator. But nevertheless, in England, pedophilia is natural and normal for boys. That's how some university academics are making the case for pedophilia at conferences this summer. Now, it's in England, but it's also in the uh, subterranean texts of the United States of America. What's going on now is that the academic establishment is pushing the boundaries on the acceptability of child sex. And so I've asked you to call to tell the world as a testament to what it's done to you as an adult. Here's an article related to it. And by the way, um, <clears throat> Don, Jay, Noodles, Josh, Keith, please stay on the line if I don't get to you. I'm almost out of time. Here's a news article related to this. North Carolina mom battles Facebook over child photo meant to mimic the copper tone pose. A North Carolina mother and photographer was temporarily banned from Facebook after she posted a photo of her young daughter's exposed buttocks in what she claims was an innocent recreation of the famous copper tone girl pose from 1953. Now, Facebook was correct for doing that. Because there are pedophiles out there who will use this as pornography. I agree 100% with Facebook. The mother is a sicko. The mother's a sicko, in my opinion. She posted a picture of a two-year-old's bathing suit bottom pulled down by her friend at the beach. No, my friends, the world is changing. And there's a lot of predators out there. It's a vicious world. Wake up. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. news stories. The main thing is that Obama has destroyed the border with Mexico and he's in a conspiracy with the Mexican government to bring in hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens from Guatemala and El Salvador and Honduras because without the Mexican authorities this, w this would not be happening as I told you. TB is spreading now in the camps. Forty infected immigrants are being brought into California. An agent has contracted scabies the man has destroyed our borders without the consent of Congress, without the consent of the people. He and a small group of brown supremacists from La Raza are destroying the United States of America right in front of our eyes. But I don't want to talk about it because I have no power over a rogue president. Who has power over a rogue president? Why, you would think the opposition party would say something. But what you don't know is the dirty little secret, which is that the opposition party is Obama. There is no opposition party. What you should know by now is that there's a single party running this country called Republicrats or Democrats, which I told you in 1994 was the case. So thank God the Tea Party arose. Thank God we almost won another big seat, but it was stolen from us by Thad uh, Cochran, who used Democrats to defeat a Tea Party member. So if you don't think the Republicans are in on this, you're crazy. Nevertheless, I want to talk about something to me which is more personally important to you, which is pedophilia, because in English academic societies, in British academic societies, they're arguing that pedophilia is natural and normal for males. At the current summer conferences, according to Andrew Gilligan of the Telegraph UK, in parts of the academic establishment, there is a movement to push the boundaries of the acceptability of child sex. This is nothing new. The psychotics have been doing this for a long time. And there used to be a group called NAMBLA, North American Man-Boy Love Association. There's no longer a NAMBLA per se. They're now working for the Department of Health and Human Services. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Many of them in, uh, have been normalized. They're taken right into the uh, left-wing uh, regime. Oh, yes. They don't have to have a, a group called NAMBLA. All they got to do is work for the Department of uh, Health and Human Services. How many of these children coming in across the Mexican territory... Uh, have been raped. They say a high number of them are being raped on the way in. So who's pushing this? Well, I don't want to talk about this infected immigrant story. I want you to call me if you were abused as a child so that we can warn Americans not to be gulled into accepting pedophilia as something normal. There are other topics I'll get to, but not right now. Let's go to WABC in New York City. Louise, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hi, I, I come from a large fam family. I have five sisters, and we were all sexually ab abused by our own grandfather. And our families turned a blind eye because this was all swept under the rug, even by the church. So every one of us have struggled with some type of substance abuse addiction. I have mm. one sister who has had about 15 suicide attempts. We're all mm. middle-aged. I'm in my 50s. Um, none of us can maintain normal relationships with men. And my issue is that there should not be a statute of limitations on this crime. It's a, it's, it's a horrific crime because the child, as children, you, you are so screwed up. You do not deal with this or even admit to it until you're years older. I did not yes. start a therapist until I was in my 40s, and mm. I'm still dealing with it. I'm 56 right now. I, was, mm. I went out with abusive men. I married an abusive man. I'm divorced. I finally had a decent man in my life for 10 years, and I destroyed that relationship because all my anger was taken out on him. Unbelievable. You know, I, Un wait, wait, no, this is a, I have to catch what you're throwing here. This is an amazing story. L Louise, were you able to hold a job in your life? I did. I'm actually retired. I'm a retired New York City detective. Uh, Unbelievable. Wait, wait, this is so interesting. I don't mean to, to, to stand here and, you know, have fun listening to you. In the, as a detective, what kind of crimes did you focus on? I, 
I had very, I didn't ha not have a lot of child abuse. My younger sister is also a cop. She had a lot of that. I had basic, you know, basic domestic violence. But, Louise, isn't it interesting that you would have chosen to go into police work? Absolutely. We, we, most of us go into service work. Most, no, but most. no, no. I'm saying as a, ch as a victim of child abuse yourself, isn't it interesting that you would seek an authority position with a gun in a club? Yes, absolutely. Authority and also we're there to help because I'm also a nurse. Wow, you sound like a wonderful person. You sound like the real nurse Jackie without the drug addiction. The terrible part of this is that, of, of this type of abuse and what it does to you, is you never feel like a whole person. You have, the, you carry this abuse and mm. what it's done to you for the rest of your life. And did you hear me in the last hour, Louise, did you happen to hear my last hour when I quoted Sigmund Freud who said, that if you awaken one day and discover you have only one arm and one leg, crawl on one arm and one leg. Did you happen to hear that? And I love that. And what happens is that, as I said, I have, I have family members that have numer numerous suicide attempts because some people can't survive on one arm and one leg. Or, it's, or the life is just too difficult. One mm -hmm. thing that I've learned in a, in a group therapy, actually in a rehab, because... Like I said, I'm an alcoholic. I heard you had another woman on who's also an alcoholic. Everyone in my family is addicted to some type of a substance. And mm. I was in rehab with a, a, a man who was abused. He happened to be a fireman, who he was abused as a child by foster parents, um, sexually and physically, and, and mm. at the church by the, by the priest. He used the word, I'm damaged goods. And when he said that, my eyes lit up because my entire life, I feel I'm damaged goods, and I'm not mm. good for anyone. And that is how children who become adults, who have been abused by adults that we thought we, we could trust, that is how we feel, that is what we portray, and we hide. We hide our feelings and how uh, people said to me, wow, you really got it all together. They had no idea what was going on inside of us. They have no idea. Louise, and, you said it was your grandfather, your actual grandfather? Yes, it was our paternal grandfather. We, and, and you live with this forever, it does not go away. Now, wait, he did this to you and all your sisters? Yes, he did. And cousins and his own daughter, my aunt. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. And none of them ever said anything to other, to other adults at the time? No. It, this was this old school, and uh, people just didn't talk about it. They swept it under the rug. My but I'm, wife, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Louise, you, you got, you, you're telling me so much that I have to grab hold of this. How could so many children... Keep a tight lip on this. Well, they did. No one said anything. And the only one who did was one of my sisters when she was 13 years old. She told my, my parents. And they never sat down. You know, the old school. I'm, I'm an old Bronx girl like you. They, they, nothing was ever discussed. They didn't sit us down and talk about it. Right, right. Everything was swept under the rug. You didn't say certain things. You would, they would say probably grandfather wouldn't do a thing like that. What are you talking about? Exactly. And when my sister did tell... It was my grandfather was confronted. He came into the house when nobody was home. She threw something at him. He threw something at her. She hit him. She was 13. Three months later, that was her first of about 15 suicide attempts. Oh, my God, the poor girl. Is she still alive, I hope? She is, and she's struggling with life. She is struggling. You know what? Like, as I said, it's, I think. Louise, I, I want to ask you a bizarre question. What is your ethnic background? Oh, well, we're born American, but we're, we're Irish, Italian, German. We're, we're a mix. We're, we're, you're a, you know, you're we're, a real we're, New York family in that New regard. New York, American. Yeah, I get it. But the, the thing was, socioeconomically, it was uh, swept under the rug at that time. Without going into more detail, if, um, if there were no statute of limitations and your grandfather was still alive, is he still living? No, my God, no, he's dead. And did he... When you say abuse, was this the real McCoy or just hugging and kissing you? Oh, no, no. This was the real McCoy. This was, this was abuse, and he abused everyone. Uh, he physically abused the boys. He would come into the house. He was such an evil man. He'd come, we had, he had a big dog. He'd come into the house, and he'd kick the dog in the testicles. He was an oh, abuse. my God. He was an e just pure evil. Abusive, evil, evil man. Yeah. Now, don't, I don't want to go get into too many details. Did this man have a job? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, he, had, he was very prominent. He actually ran for the Bronx Borough President in the 1930s. Oh, that about fits. That's he about owned, that he fits. Owned, he owned a real estate business. He was very active in the Catholic Church to the point where he abused... My father remembers this, that he abused a little girl in the 1930s, late 30s, 
And my father said he remembers the woman going to the Monsignor, going to the church, reporting him. I want him arrested. And the church talked her out of it and swept it under the rug. Oh, my God. Well, Louise, I, I'm almost breathless from your pain, to be honest with you. It's painful to listen to you. It's almost heartbreakingly painful. And all I can say is you're not alone. I mean, maybe it's good for you to express yourself like this on a national radio show. Do you feel it's good to do this, or do you think it's somewhat uh, going to be uh, negative for you? I think it's positive, and, and I wanted to do this, Mike, because I know how prevalent this is. It is not talked about, and I do understand that it is becoming very acceptable for people to, have, to abuse and have sex with children and tell them it's okay, and I have children of my own. Uh, and they probably, I probably drove them insane about people touching them and doing things to them. But I, I'm realizing what's going on here, and you have a child trade throughout the world, and it's becoming acceptable, and it is destroying, destroying everyone. You are the only person that I heard, the, as soon as I heard about all these children coming across the border, the first thing out of my mouth was, this is, an under, this is going to be an underclass, an underculture. These children are going to be horribly, horribly abused. Well, I am reading that many of them are abused in Mexico by the cartels who are bringing them in. Absolutely. Who, who, what are they being brought in for? Who is going to, what are two-year-old girls going to be used for? What are they bringing them in for? There you go. There you go. Louise, something doesn't make sense here. No. No, I think evil is running the country. Evil is running the world. This is, it's, yes, I think evil is running the world right now. I think evil is out of control. I think Satan right now is very much in control to put it in a biblical sense. And so I'm sitting here, sitting in the temple, looking at what's going on in the arena, seeing the people cheering as this madness continues, and all I can do is stand here and try to say, people, do you know what you're doing? People, do you know what you're doing to this country? Do you know what you're doing to the world with your insane dash towards freedom and liberalism? Do you have any idea what you've done and what damage you're going to do if you don't stop? And the answer is they don't care. And the band played on. Louise, the ship is going down and they're on the rear deck dancing to the band at the back of the ship. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank, thank you. I, I, Louise, I don't know what to say to you. I feel that you and I have just had a moment of friendship on this radio show. We don't know each other. We probably will never uh, meet each other, but I feel that we made a contact, uh, a bond between us, rather. That's overwhelmingly beautiful, Louise. But I thank you for addressing this. I, I want to see this addressed more, and, and people are just ignoring it. They're ignoring Louise, it. Louise, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. That's uh, 18 minutes after the hour now, and uh, I think I'm going to stick with this topic a few more minutes. I mean, the news is so overwhelmingly evil, and we can't do anything about it an out-of-control evil administration. If the opposition party won't do it, if the Supreme Court is stepped upon, what can we do is what you feel. So let's focus very much on ourselves and our families. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. SwissAmerica.com. It is 24 minutes after the hour. While the border is being overrun by, at this point, 300,000 300,000 illegal immigrants infected some of them with tuberculosis, scabies, other diseases. Border Patrol officials are under a gag order. They will be fired if they disclose what is going on. A sitting congressman could not access the centers where these so-called children are being held. No one knows what's being done to them. La Raza is screaming right on, viva La Raza. The Los Angeles Police Department said they will no longer comply with immigration hold requests. The nation is melting down to a third world status. And at the same time, there is an intellectual foundation being laid for further damage to the fabric of our society, including that of pedophilia being normalized in some corners of academia. And some university academics are making the case for pedophilia at summer conferences being paid for with taxpayer dollars. If you think this is a small, marginal issue, I hope you're right. However, if it's one child who is protected from one predator as a result of this radio program, 
then the entire day will have been worth living. Did you hear what I said? You know, unless you've had a child, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Let, let me be honest with you. You might be a good person. You might be a, a moral person. But unless you've seen a child enter the world and see how naked and innocent the baby is, an infant, and, and watch the infant grow into a child and then into an adolescent and then into a person, unless you understand how frail an infant really is and what, what total protection that infant needs, you have no way to understand what I'm saying to you. You may think it's amusing. You may think it's just some right-wing hysteria. You can laugh it off if you will. I could care less. I'm trying to talk to people who have children who are rather normal and want to protect their children from the pedophiles out there. And believe me, they're everywhere. Yes, they're everywhere, and especially in psychological and academic circles, because those are, the so those are the soft areas. I didn't mean that every psychologist and every academic is a pedophile. Don't misinterpret what I just said. And that's why I've asked people to call with their story. Do you understand? WABC, Josh, thanks for holding. Tell your story. You're on the air with Michael Savage and millions of others. Dr. Savage, um, I've, uh, I was molested at seven years old by my uncle, mm. um, my, uh, my father's brother. Um, I was asked to go down to the basement to uh, help him pick something up. Mm -hmm. In a as I was now, I mean, I'm 51 now, and... Um, and you're still affected by it. To this day, it's like it's real. He, <laughs> Doctor, I'm sorry, but he, he beat me. He beat me, and he, and he violated me. <laughs> And um, I'm sorry. And I was jo Josh. Where where is this sob monster today? Is he living? <laughs> yes, and I'm, I pray <laughs> that he's dead, that, that he dies. Like, and I'm <laughs> I'm. A jo Josh, I want you to Josh. Please listen to me. Don't be ashamed for what you just said, nor for crying. It's the sign of health. Please stay with us, Josh. Please don't go away. This is not a joke. This is a human being whose heart was broken 50 years ago. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. This is Savage Nation. You know, we're living in a time where people don't feel anything. Everyone's walking around with a device. They're on medication or they're stoned on something or drunk. And yet around us are individuals harboring unimaginable psychic pain that they've borne with them uh, forever. And you say, well, why are you dwelling on it? Why are you talking about it? Why don't you do something to make people happy? Well, because I, I'm not an entertainer. I can be. But life can also not be that entertaining. It can also be very painful. And talking about this pain and trying to prevent it in another person is of value. It's that simple. And we're talking today about pedophilia. And we're talking today about the attempts to normalize sex with children in academic and psych psychological circles. And unless you stand up to it right now, I'm warning you, not in your lifetime, but sooner than you can imagine, the borders will come crashing down on all morality in this society. Just as Obama, because he is an evil atheist, destroyed our borders without even asking permission to do so, and that he's, got, and he's gotten away with it, the moral borders will be broken down completely unless you say, don't cross this line, don't even think about crossing this line, you touch my child, I'll kill you. It's that simple. That's what it's going to take. I'm warning you. It's literally going to take a mother or a father with that kind of energy to protect their children with what's coming in this sick society. That's what I see. Why do I say it? Am I crazy? You think I'm nuts? You think I don't see what's coming in this society with every barrier being broken down under the guise of liberalism and progressivism and its freedom? You think I don't see what's coming? At the end of the day, you, the mother, are going to have to protect your children. And you're not going to have to worry about a lawyer or the police or a social worker. You're going to have to do what you know is right because they're not going to do it for you. In fact, they're liable to be the enemy rather than the friend if this keeps up and if everything keeps getting twisted. In other words, if Obama could turn the Border Patrol into coyotes, if Obama could turn the police into the enemy of the people instead of the protectors of the people, if Obama can use the NSA to spy on innocent Americans rather than Muslim terrorists, what might happen tomorrow? The world is upside down. Evil is everywhere. And so I care about the children. And I'm telling you to get ready because they're coming for your children. They're coming inside the schools, 
It starts nice. Oh, it starts nice. It doesn't start with them saying that they're going to molest your child. It starts with academic studies. It starts with papers, university papers, such as, quote, liberating the pedophile, a discursive analysis, or, quote, danger and difference, the stakes of hebophilia. This is how it starts. This is how the devil works. So I'm just telling you, you want to call about this, go ahead. Maybe you can prevent one uh, case of child abuse by calling the show, by calling the Savage Nation. Let's go back to Josh on WABC. Josh, I'm, I'm sorry for um, your pain. You said your uncle, your father's brother, took you in the basement and beat you and molested you? Yes, for, and, um, for, for quite a while, and um, he went upstairs, and I was told to stay down there. And um, when I did come up, Everyone said, what happened to you? I said, nothing, I just don't feel good. But I was bleeding profusely from a certain area. And oh um, I washed and I washed in the shower till I burned my skin. Oh, God. Um, the next day I ran to my Monsignor and he slapped me all over the right journey because he knew my uncle and said I was evil for even making such an accusation. So oh, my God. How in the world can a child take such pain? He won, and there's certain things in my life that I just can't seem to pass, but through God's grace, I'm trying. But if any child is hearing me, I pray to God that they never go through what I went through because I'm 51 and I I try to stay grounded but my god there's so many nightmares so many, I was so young and I'm I'm old now and I'm I still could smell feel the pain wake up at night I just I just don't get why I blamed my I still blame myself for the love of god and I don't know why Oh, my and, God. In the basement. Yeah, no, that's the psychological trick here, Josh. The pedophile is the devil himself. And the pedophile makes the child feel as though he invited the sexual interaction. In fact, there are academics arguing that the children want the sex. Did you know that? No. Well, let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. Shall I read it to you? As recently as the year 2012, Professor Plummer published on his personal blog a chapter he wrote in another book, Male Intergenerational Intimacy, in 1991. And here is what he wrote, quote, As homosexuality has become slightly less open to sustained moral panic, the new pariah of child molester has become the latest folk devil, he wrote. And let me continue, Josh. He wrote this, Many adult pedophiles say the boys, that boys actively seek out sex partners and that childhood itself is not a biological given but an historically produced social object. That is Professor Ken Plummer, Emeritus Professor of Sociology at, a, at Essex University in England, where he has an office and teaches courses. Can you believe this? No, I can't. But, Doctor, let me just tell you something. You, um, I, I love my God with all my heart, and believe me when I tell you, you are like a friend to me. I run to your show every day, and you help me. And when I heard you open up this conversation, I, I dialed that phone until I got through. And you, you are a rare breed. And I, I thank God for you. But Josh, wait! I can't just have you go and me say thank you and go on to the next call. I can't leave you like this. I can't do it. We got to talk another minute on this on these airwaves, Josh. First of all, are you alone right now? Yes, I live alone. I can't live with nobody. <laughs> Well, who do you have to help you, Josh, when you get into these states? My Bible. <laughs> oh, jeez. My oh, Bible. What pain, what pain in this world is enough to make you smash I hate him. him. When he died, nobody looks at me and my family. You know why? Because I didn't go. Oh, so they blamed you. You were the bad guy. They ostracized me. They don't. Did they? Yes. Yes. And I don't care, though. <laughs> Josh, Josh, do you have no, you have no one in your life that you can call right now? I, you, you, Doctor Zab. Yeah, but you. I'm I'm just I'm just the guy on the radio, Josh. We don't know. Josh, have you ever? You, you, you've not tried to hurt yourself, I hope. Have you? Twice, but I failed at that. So God wants me here for something. All right. So listen to me. You, you're not in that state right now, are you? 
not at all. I just hurt. I hurt when I hear these. It's like ripping off a scab. Well, maybe I shouldn't have done the show. Maybe I should oh, be guilty. No, no, no. You don't know what you did. You you make me see a different light. You make me know that there's hope, and I'm not the only one anymore. Okay, well, that's the whole point, Josh. You know, you heard a female call who was a detective, a retired New York City detective. Do you know how tough they have to be? And yet she's been walking around with the same hurt that you've had all your life, Josh. I related to her so so. Poignantly, Josh, I'm trying to tell you there are people who, if you look at them, what you say when you walk the streets of Manhattan, let's say, or wherever you are, you look and you say, look how everyone is happy but me. Everyone's healthy but me. Everyone has somebody to go to but me. No one feels the pain I feel. You don't know how many others are carrying around this, this cancer. I know. Now I know. Well, Josh, if I can leave you with anything to hang on to is this. You're not alone. You're not alone. It's an epidemic. It's an epidemic, and your sad story, whether you know it or not, has probably touched millions of people. They will talk about it, and they'll be in tears for, for your tears. Your pain will become their pain. And perhaps, then, and perhaps then they will pay closer attention to their own child. And when their own child may come to them and say, somebody wanted to do this or somebody wanted to do that, and if they're busy on an iPhone or they're busy making an appointment, maybe they'll put that iPhone down and pay attention to that little child. But may I just say one thing to you before we leave? Oh, please. Believe me, I love you. God bless you. All right, Josh. I'm sorry you have such incredible, incredible, bur such a burden to carry. Well, a man once told me when I was young is that we all have a cross to bear. Josh sure has a heavy one. I don't know if I should continue the show. I mean, in this manner. I mean, I can't suddenly switch to uh, meatball recipes. I can't do anything light. I can't talk about my dog. I can't talk about uh, immigration. It's going to be very hard for me to move off this topic, I'll be honest with you. You know what? It does fit my show. If the Savage Nation stands for America's borders, language, and culture, does the word culture not imply a certain morality, a certain morality that was that is a certain part of this nation until Obama came along and broke down all borders and all barriers? Do you understand psychologically that breaking down the border of a nation is the equivalent of breaking down all moral barriers inside the nation's um, mindset? Do you understand what he's intending to do? Do you understand what the left does? Do you understand that they want to kick in every barrier and every boundary without caring what the results may be? They may not even have an agenda. They are just destructive. Do you understand that? Anyway, that's one man's opinion. If you want to continue on this line of thought, we have a little time left in this hour. If you have a story that you think could somehow help somebody and you want to get it out of your system, go ahead. I don't know that I'm ever going to do this show again. I don't know. I don't think I can ever do it again. Maybe my, my the young guys were right. Maybe they don't like this. Neil, Robert, how do you feel about this show? You can speak on the air. Robert, speak on the air. Tell me what you think. I want you to talk, if you can. Hit the right button, though, so don't lock. It's, no, it, it's a very powerful, very powerful topic. That's, Neil, that's what I think about it. Okay, Robert. Neil, you're, you're there in Dallas Control. What do you feel about the show, Neil? Okay, he's on the phone with Josh. Okay. I'll be right back on the Savage Nation to take your calls. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. You know, every once in a while, we step into subject areas that are unique and uh, difficult for the audience. And this is one of those days. And we've heard from three or four people whose pain was so overwhelming, especially the last gentleman, that I'm afraid that there may be hundreds out there listening who are in tears right now whose old wounds have been opened up, who the scabs have been ripped off. I'm going to give you a national crisis suicide hotline if you feel crazy, shaky, nuts, can't go on, don't know why I feel this way, 800-273-8255. National crisis suicide hotline, 800-273-8255. Write it down. Don't laugh. 800-273-8255. Don't laugh. Psychic pain is worse than than a broken arm. Psychic pain is worse than a broken leg because a broken arm or a broken leg will heal in time while psychic pain never heals. 
It's an injury that never gets better. Never. All you can do is manage psychic pain like this. You can't cure it. Some days are better than others. Some days you can ignore the pain, the rape, the molestation, the mild touching, whatever it was. Just pass it through your mind and you can laugh it off and say, I'm an adult now. It happened a long time ago. Uh, Uncle James didn't really mean it. Well, no, Uncle James really did mean it. And Uncle James should be uh, dragged into a, a jail right now, into a court. Uncle James, no matter how old you are, Uncle James should be turned out. But beware, because these feelings can be very damaging to you all over again. 800-273-8255. This is the Savage Nation. America's borders, language, and culture are our normal fare. Today we're talking about the normalization of pedophilia. Why? Because it's in the news. It's as simple as that. And as the show develops over the summer, I hope to do other topics that are a little, not off the beaten path, because they're very much on the beaten path of life, but they're off the beaten path of talk radio. I'm not going to get up here every day and read the Constitution to you, or the Bill of Rights. I'm not going to sound like a Marxist professor who became a conservative late in life because it made money, wearing a dirty brown suit from Robert Hall with a tuna fish stain in his lapel. I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I've always been a poet. I've always been an artist. And I've developed. And at the end of the day, poet and art are critical to my show. So I'm going to try to incorporate the poetry and art of our lives together. It's that simple. Politically, you know where I stand. Politically, I see what's going on. Politically, I see a monster in the White House. A monster surrounded by mother other monsters out to destroy everything of any value in this country. I don't have to read it as a headline in the Daily News to know what he's doing. Do I need some sicko at the New York Times to tell me what I know is? I don't need them to tell me what is. They need me to tell them what is. But I'm not going to do it every day. I'm not going to do it every day because we no longer have a nation. We have an oligarchy that's out of control, that's out to stampede this country into a third world status right in front of our eyes. If a sitting congressman from Oklahoma, a former Navy combat veteran and a pilot, tries to get into a, a holding center where they have these children from El Salvador and Guatemala and Honduras, and they won't let a congressman in his own state, what the heck am I supposed to do if we have a lawless administration? Tell me what I'm supposed to do. If a Navy combat veteran, now a congressman, was barred entry into a child detention center with these children... A crime, a crime by this administration, a gang, a gang, a gang, a gang, a gang. If my Alaski took over the country, he would have done a, a better job. If my Alaski took over this country, he would probably be a more patriotic gangster than what we have right now. But what can I do about it? I see the truth, but I can't do a thing about it. Where's God when we need him? Where's God? Where's God right now? Where's the God that we need right now to save us from this demonic situation? It's as though the devil himself has taken over this country. You know, if I was alone in these, think in these thinking, I wouldn't even do the show anymore. I think I'd gone crazy altogether from the, from the pressure I'm under. But I meet people. I have very few pe a few people close to me. They're pretty successful. They're older men. They've worked all their lives. They've achieved greatness in their own fields. Everyone sees the same thing. No matter what field they're in, they know what Obama is and what he's doing. They don't have to turn to the newspaper to get their truth. They use their native intelligence and their logical faculties to know what's going on in the country. So that's why I say, tend your own garden. At the end of the day, it's all we can do. And I'm here to tend the garden with you. I'm the good shepherd, the gardener, Michael Savage. I'll be back right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage.
America's borders are being overrun as a result of Obama and Holder planning this. And we proved it over and over again. This is not by accident. We saw uh, the emails from Department of Health and Human Services dated last January putting out requests for proposal for food and housing and clothing for up to 100,000 of these uh, children. Over the weekend, we learned that the NSA is not spying, in fact, on foreigners, but most NSA data is from regular Internet users like you, meaning you, the moron who elected this demonic administration. You elected Holder. You elected Obama. I didn't. I didn't support this regime. I know who they were. They're worse than the Stasi in Eastern Europe. And you did it, all you good liberals who wanted to bring it all down, man. Well, you brought it all down, girl. And now they're spying on you, your emails, your instant messages. They're not spying on the next Sarnoff. They're not looking at the next Muslim terrorist. They're looking at you. You're now living in the ex-Soviet Union. Why do you think they're breaking the border down? The next will be guns. Oh, yeah, Biden said the tea baggers standing in the way of gun control. That's right. What do you think those two billion rounds of uh, hollow point nine millimeter of bullets were for? You think it was for the, what? To protect our borders from the gangbangers coming over? You think it's protect us from the Islamo fascists? No. You know what those nine millimeter rounds are set for, don't you? You can't put two and two together yet. You're still dancing on the back of, on the, on the stern of the ship, still partying on. Can't wake up from your hangover. Still have a hangover from your big July Fourth blowout. 14 killed and 82 wounded in Chicago over the holiday. 14 killed and 82 wounded in Chicago over the holiday under Eric Holder and uh, whatever his name is, the mayor there. The mayor whose name I forget, whose brother uh, is, is a big Hollywood uh, agent. Oh, yeah. And I think the other brother is one of the architects of Obamacare. What a prize they've given America. What a prize those three brothers are for this country. And yet... Here we are. We're talking about something that has nothing to do with any of these devils. We're talking about pedophilia and how they're trying to normalize it in the universities. And I've read you some of the so-called academic articles about the normaling of a child, a sex with children. And I've asked you if you're a victim to call the show. Why? Not to, not to hurt you. Well, we had a couple of people in the last hour that I will never forget for the rest of my radio career. I, I can't believe what we touched on here. And again, we have some callers coming up at 855-407-282. Let's start with, let's start here in San Francisco. Admittedly, one of the sickest places on the planet. Ground zero for evil. The most beautiful place on earth. That's why I stay here. I've never lived in a more beautiful place. I have been in beautiful places. Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, the Marquesas. I've been in some places that can make you cry. They were so beautiful. But all in all, I've never been in a more beautiful places, which is why I stay here. Yesterday, most of the day, I sat by myself staring at the bay. I live right near the bay in some places. I sat in the chair under the shade and looked at the bay and looked at the birds. I looked at the seals. I looked at the land formed. I watched the fog moving across the East Bay. It was so perfect. I said, I don't want to go anywhere. I'm not going to let these psychotics drive me out of my own town. They didn't create the fog. You're telling me the liberals created the fog? They created the land forms? They'd have you believe they created the ocean itself. No, it's as much a part of, of my life as it is anyone else's, and so I stay here. So uh, let's take a couple of calls right now on this issue of pedophilia and how uh, you may have been a victim of it. James on KSFO, thanks for holding. Tell your story, James. Go ahead, please. I'm walking home from school, second grade, eight years old, taking the half-mile shortcut through the woods to my apartment. Halfway in, this guy jumps out, puts a knife to my throat, and says, You scream, I kill you. He then pushes me ahead to a log falling on the ground. And this whole time, after the shock, I'm going, uh, What he said he's going to do to me, I don't want done to me. I was raised that I'm in charge of my life. And I don't want this to happen, so I'm planning my escape. I don't have the option of overpowering him. He's an adult. <sighs> he sits down on the log, and the, the hand with the knife goes down to his zipper, and his other hand holding my arm tightly. And I've decided that my best escape plan, because there's apartments nearby, is to let out the most blood-curdling scream I can think of to shock him and maybe release his grip a little. 
It works. I run, oh, man, I wonder what my clock time would have been for that quarter mile. Mm. Lock the front door, post my brother and sister at the back windows, wait for my parents to get home from work. Cops come. I get picked up from school for two weeks, sit in an unmarked car, and then one day, that's him. Boom, mm. he's gone. Then I had friends come out of the woodwork and tell me that he had abused them, too, and thanked me for getting rid of him. I would like now, to... Wait, wait, wait. When you say get rid of him, you mean the cops got him, or what happened? Yeah, he got taken away. He got arrested right there in front of me. I'm watching it. And where, where did he get Did he get tried and convicted, I hope? I, you know, I was eight. He was yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Kids, kids don't understand the legal system. They don't, they don't follow it, really. So has it? Okay, you escaped because you had the will, the will, and the the mindset to do so, James. But obviously, it's still with you, correct? I want parents to know: teach their children, plan your escape. It's your best shot. Don't mm. panic. Figure it out, and tell the guy that called before: go back to that church, work his way up the hierarchy. They had the resources to help that man. That that other guy that that did that to him, he needs to be convicted. But the Church needs to be his befriend. They need to befriend him. Don't you agree? Yeah, I do agree, James. But he was in such pain. You're talking about that fellow from New York City on uh, the other station in the last hour. Uh, I, I think he was so emotionally wrecked that he could never, ever do that, James. He just needs to go to church. He's religious. He goes to church. Just talk to the damn priest. Excuse my you mean, you mean maybe there's a new climate today is what you're saying? Yes, there is. No, I agree with you. I think there would be a new climate. But I think his uncle is long dead by what I heard. You know. I thought he said he was still around. I don't really, I, I, I was so emotionally moved by his story. I may have heard something you know, that was not correct. I don't know. I was so enraptured in, by his pain and his story. I, I may not have heard the whole thing, to be honest with you. The church needs to help that guy. He just needs to go ask. James, before we leave this this uh, segment on the show today, do you feel I should have done this or not have done this show? Well, I called, and I've talked to you before when you had the local show, but, um, you know, I'm a farmer in, in Moraga, and... Um, uh, I'm, local I'm, show, you're talking about 20... You're talking my local show was over 15 years ago. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, look, man, you, you're great. You're the salt of the earth, and I thank you for calling the program. Let's go to one last caller right now in Washington. Brad, thank you for calling. Go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, I was driving across the southern Idaho and couldn't get the station, and this guy comes on, and he's talking about the prophet by Khalil Gibran. And I had no idea who you were or what that was. But I can't tell you how fantastic that has been for me. Oh, yeah, and very important. Very important book. Very important writer. Khalil Gibran was uh, very popular when I was in college. Most of the kids of my generation read him, read many of his books. And uh, The Prophet was probably the most popular of all of his books. What What's interesting to me about Khalil Gibran today is that, A, he was a Muslim. And yet he was not an Islamist, not an Islamist, and he was also a heroin addict. But it didn't affect his thinking in the sense that he was able to be a prophet anyway. If if I could just leave one more thing with those of you, those of your audience who may be suffering, whatever you're suffering with is just a part of you. It's that's right. That's right. It's not your whole. It's not your totality. But we get sucked into it, and we think that's the only thing we. That's are. right, and I could I could go a step further, which is like a headache. Uh, a headache is not you. You are not your headache. You are not your cancer. You are not your heart attack. You are not your diabetes. How many people do you hear say my cancer or my heart attack or my diabetes? They've taken it in as a part of their being, instead of rejecting it as not a part of their being and and pushing it away. They actually take it in. I think that's what you're saying. It's an interesting uh, form of mental jujitsu to deal with disease and pain, isn't it? It is. It is. And if I can leave one more thing, that Khalil Gibran helped me with the emotional side. A book called The Seed of the Soul helped me with the intellectual side, to be able to think of things 
in abstract terms or, or instead of emotionally charged words. All right. As long as you found peace and it helps you cope every day, that's the object of literature. Uh, that's the object of art. That's the object of anything on earth that we seek in our culture. And I thank you for talking about that uh, invisible radio show by that unknown broadcaster many years ago. Uh, and I'm that man. And that's why I'm telling you that there's much more to life than the evil that is emanating out of the uh, Oval Office. Yes, there's evil emanating out of the Oval Office. Oh, yes, it has a, a, a hard intent. But I can't talk about it three hours a day, 15 hours uh, a week. I won't do it. There was more to the world than Eric Holder and Barack Obama, uh, Michelle, and all of them uh, when I was young and when I was a young man. And I, there'll be more after they're gone. Once they're out of office, and I pray to God they are, I pray we survive uh, the next election, let alone 2016. I do hope so. Uh, I hope my worst nightmares don't come through. True. But once they're in the past, and America can digest what they did to us, and we start the long road of recovery, there'll still be uh, other things on earth that are worth talking about and, and worth doing. And that's why I'm trying to do it today. You understand? 855 Let's take another quick call on this subject. KSFO, a man named Noodles. Welcome to the program from San Francisco. Go ahead, please. Uh, great topic, Michael. Thank you. Um pleasure and honor to contact you. You have both feet on the ground and you're way ahead of the curve. Uh, uh, Noodles, you're breaking up. What is your main point, please? Well, I'm not a childhood victim of abuse. I was a man. Okay, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Very bad call. Not because the man was bad, but the connection was bad. Colorado, K-V-O-R. Jay, welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Michael, along with the incredible, uh, you know, pain and suffering, it is the what happened to me was the hatred I felt as a small child. You don't, you know, understand what hate is until something like that happens to you. Mm. And uh, it's just, you know, so many sleepless nights. And, and I'm a very strong man. And uh, it's just... But, but I'm saying you, you, you've you lived with this your whole life and you're, you're coping with it to this day, the, the child molestation? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm an accomplished individual. I'm a scientist like yourself, uh, physically gifted, mentally. But, you know, I have a family, and to see my son so innocent and gifted and what that was. That's right. That's right. And you have to protect your son literally with your You have to be willing to protect your son with your life because society will not do it. Our society is so perverse right now that it will probably turn on your child and you'll have to protect your child from the society. I'm not just making that up. Take a look at Child Protective Services and which side they're on. They're usually on the side of, of, of wrong, not on right. That's what I've discovered in my life. Imagine my family being in that type of situation. My, my children, they're so innocent. That's what I mean. You look in their eyes. You look in, your, in their eyes. You see them being born. It's something that changes a man forever. You know, the average guy is uh, a fun-loving creature when he's young. All he wants is to run around, have fun, you know, have sex, whatever. And having a child, you ask any young man once he has a child, if, he, if he's a sound person, it usually changes their life for the better, doesn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, I, I grew up uh, in a troubled, you know, broken family with two very strong brothers, and uh, my mom couldn't handle us, and we kind of did what we wanted and we paid for it but you know we made it through my brothers are in the military and uh i'm very See, proud everyone, of them everyone has a cross to bear the issue is everyone has a cross to bear i'm trying to open up this subject because i see it being normalized in the universities today my friend thank you for calling we're running flat out of time it's 20 minutes after the hour it's the savage nation i'll be right back Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. And here's some news from the underground, stories that will not make it to your filthy local newspaper that's worthless. It's nothing but a government rag that publishes only happy news about Obama, only happy news about Holder, 
Only happy news about the First Lady. Only happy news about the socialist communists who are running the country into the third world. Let's go to the real news. Drudge Report, border breakdown, deportations drop. 40 infected immigrants transported to California, being released into the general population. TB spreading in the camps. Scabies. Scabies spreading amongst Border Patrol officers. Border Patrol officers under a gag order from the new brown shirts that are running the country. HHS has put out rules for reporters so the useless vermin in the media will not even ask question one. China is now saying it can defeat America in battle. 18, 82 wounded and 14 killed in Chicago under our great uh, leader, Eric Holder, and uh, whoever the mayor is there. Biden demanding gun control, saying only teabaggers stand in the way of gun control. School nutrition group turns on Michelle Obama. You get the picture. Go to Drudge Report for the rest of the headlines. There are other sites that I go to every day. World Net Daily is my partner on my website. Go to World Net Daily. Take a look at what they have up there. It's not all depressing news. You want the real news? Or do you want to read the, 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 the useless stuff that uh, the San Francisco Chronicle puts out? They don't even report on the border incident. To show you what irrelevance is... They are the epitome of irrelevance. The San Francisco Chronicle has become the epitome of what is irrelevant in the United States of America. But that's an old story. This is the Savage Nation, America's borders, language, and culture. I'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. It is the savage nation. It's a sad world we're living in. A lot of people are very depressed. We have a demonic administration out to destroy everything of any value in the United States of America. I know you don't want to accept it. Many of you think it's not that bad. But, you know, I know an awful lot of intelligent people who see it that way. None of us collect welfare. None of us collect a dime from this corrupt government. Most of us are accomplished either in business or science or medicine. Everyone sees what he's doing and what his intent is. We see the intent. We see the actions. We see the results. We see the meltdown in the Middle East. We see the meltdown on our borders. And so, again, I'm making it very personal. We're talking about other topics. If you want to talk about the news that I touched on, you can do so. Or if you want to talk about the issue of being, having been molested as a child, the phone number is 855-400-7282. KSFO San Francisco, Glenn, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hey, Dr. Savage. Uh, I'm in North Carolina now, but I grew up in Petrero and Sunnyside District of San Francisco. Right. And um, I was a altar boy at a church in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. and we were having evening mass, and then I messed up the, the post-communion ringing bells back in the 60s when we had that. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, the father in question <laughs> asked me to practice after Mass was over with. Mm -hmm. And uh, he exposed himself to me right there in, in, in the church. And, uh, well, I hit him. I was only 12 years old, but I hit him twice in that nether region between the front and back of where you Good sit. for you. Good for you. Apparently you were raised to be a man at a very my, early age. My father taught me a little self-defense, if you will. And what happened as a result of you standing up and punching him uh, between the legs? I didn't punch him between the legs. I stuck my thumb way up in there, and I, I ruptured something. According to the Monsignor, I ruptured some blood vessel or something like that. And he, <laughs> From what I can understand, he couldn't uh, use the bathroom for a week. But, I mean, what happened as a result of it? Did the church back you up, or did they attack you? I was in a Catholic church, uh, Catholic school, too. No, I'm saying, did they back you up? Wait, let's back up, Glenn. Did the church, after it happened, say you did the right thing, or did they call you a bad boy? I talked to the, I talked to the Monsignor, and you know what they What he did is he protected the priest and told him, told me that I was too violent to be enrolled in his school. That's right. In other words, a real man need not apply. I get it. You weren't a good enough victim for the church. My 
father and my stepmother, and they wouldn't believe me either. No, of course not. You know, I had a couple of friends who were molested as boys. They just came back to me now. I'm not going to mention the name, but one of them, let's say we'll call him um, John. John was repeatedly molested by a dentist while in the chair as a little boy. He would go home and tell his mother and say, Ma, Mr. G Dr. Goldberg did this to me or that to you. And the mother would say, Don't be stupid, John. Dr. Goldberg wouldn't do that to a little boy. That kid was crazy most of the rest of his life, Glenn, because his mother didn't believe him. Another boy was molested by a rabbi during training for his confirmation or bar mitzvah. The rabbi performed fel fel fellatio on this young man, this boy. The boy went to his mother and she didn't believe him. She said a rabbi would never do that. The boy became damaged goods. So... There are stories out there that people would never believe that must be told, Glenn, and little boys must be taught particularly how to defend themselves the way you did. They must learn to kick, scratch, bite, punch, poke out an eye if necessary with a pen or a, a votive candle. If they have to pick up a Torah scroll and jam it into the rabbi's eye, if that happens, that's what they should be taught. Thank you for the call. If they have to pick up a talus, and wrap it around the rabbi's neck and hang him if they try to do that. Then teach your child how to do that. Or take the tefillin and wrap it around his neck. Listen to me. There's a lot of hatred out there. There's a lot of damage out there. There's a lot of rage out there. All is not roses. It's a vicious world. It's a vicious, vicious world. And, you know, speaking of this subject, it's strange. This just popped up on World Net Daily. Hillary says, defending a child rapist was my job. I can't believe it. Hillary says, defending a child rapist was my job. It's on World Net Daily. Hillary Clinton, viewed by most as a likely Democrat presidential candidate, has explained her defense of a child rape suspect as just part of the job. But she hasn't explained her laughing about his passing of a lie detector test, which destroyed her faith in such evaluations. She said, once I was appointed, I fulfilled that obligation, she said, in an interview with Mumsnet, a U.K. community of parents providing and sharing information on a variety of subjects. She's, in the video, she has asked this. As a lawyer, you defended the rapist of a 12-year-old girl, calling the victim emotionally unstable and saying that girls have a tendency to exaggerate or romanticize sexual experiences, especially when they come from disorganized families, close quote. That was to Hillary Clinton, your hero. Comments, then Clinton said, when I was a 27-year-old attorney doing legal aid work at the law school where I taught in Fayetteville, Arkansas, I was appointed by the local judge to represent a criminal defendant accused of rape. I, I asked to be relieved of that responsibility, but I was not. And I had a professional duty to represent my client to the best of my ability, which I did. This is Hillary Clinton. She says, he later pled guilty to a lesser included offense. When you're a lawyer, you often don't have the choice as to who you'll represent. Uh, it goes on and she says, I was appointed, I fulfill that obligation. However, she did not, that is Hillary, did not address the reports of unearthed recordings, new recordings, in which Hillary almost boasts of knowing of her client's guilt and laughing about the case. Aha, uh -huh. that famous laugh, huh? We came, we saw he, he died. <laughs> the hidden tapes of Hillary laughing about her client's guilt and laughing Reveal her discussing the case of Thomas Alfred Taylor, then 41, who was accused of raping a 12-year-old in Springdale, Arkansas, on May 10, 1975. Clinton said, it was a fascinating case. It was a very interesting case. This guy was, I, I don't want to read anymore. It's on World Net Daily right now. So she represented a child rapist. And her defense and strategy at the time was to attack the 12-year-old girl. Hillary Clinton submitted an affidavit that said she was told the girl was, quote, emotionally unstable and was viewed as having a, quote, tendency to seek out older men and engage in fantasizing, close quote. That's the first woman president right there. Hillary Clinton additionally said the child, quote, in the past made false accusations, and Hillary Clinton said she exhibited an unusual stubbornness and temper when she does not get her way. Hmm, these records are available. Just came out today. It's all on World Net Daily. Isn't that interesting? We actually have a full interview of it uh, that we'll play for you tomorrow on the Savage Nation of your first woman president. How do you like that? You mean all women are not compassionate and kind and wonderful and 
Nope. Hillary defended a child rapist and said it was my job. How do you like that? Who would have thunk? Who would have ever thought that Hillary Clinton would do a thing like that? Oh, well, you don't care anyway, because after all, it's important to have the first woman president. That'll sure work out well. WMAL, Jeff, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Savage. Thank you for taking my call. I've been listening to you for 20 years. We've never got the third hour here, man. I told you, call screener, we need the third hour here. But <laughs> it was in guard. And he he went impotent before he could really violate me, so he basically just broke every bone in my body. Oh. And, slugged, and But uh, I'm telling you, a lot of people are saying to you, I'm talking to you, Everybody's saying, you shouldn't have done this show today. Let me tell you. Uh, and when I was a kid, I'd go in the kitchen at night and turn on the light and all the cockroaches would scatter. What you are doing on your show today is you turn the light on and all those cockroaches are going to scatter, boy. I'm telling you. The, the reason they get away with it, the reason it happens, is nobody does anything about it. They tell, they'll tell you, all the, oh, these poor souls are sick, they're ill, they're all this stuff. Yeah, I can I can cure the sickness and illness, but anyway. I, no, no, I hear you. So, your are you saying your father hurt you? Oh uh, yes, sir. He hurt me and nobody else. And every and this, uh, uh, did I tell anybody? I didn't have to tell anybody. His he he got off better when he had an audience, and his favorite audience was uniformed police officers. Uh, he was he was high up in the federal government, and he had a photo ID tag, federal government employee, so he could do what he wanted to to me anywhere, in front of anybody. And see, they get so high up, and they get such incredible, important, great records that you know when they're accused. Yeah, yeah. In other words, they think they're above the law. In other words, they have a feeling of of uh, power that's beyond comprehension, and they can't be hurt. They become the untouchable, but. What do you do when you have a president who thinks he's the untouchable and breaks open the borders and says, I didn't do it? What do you do with a man like that? Well, what you do, you shine the light on him. So, uh, Well, it's not stopping him. They're coming over the border in the hundreds of thousands now. They're putting in goon squads. Obama's sending down a goon squad to, to quash the protesters. That's right. Obama is sending down goon squads to crush Americans with American flags who do not want to be overrun uh, by illegal aliens. He's sending down the goon squads. It's going to get very interesting. Unfortunately, some days I wake up and I say, you know, I'm writing a book coming out in October called Stop the Coming Civil War. It wasn't just hyperbole. I really fear it. I'm trying to tell people that the only chance we have is to throw the Democrats out and send a strong message against socialism to both parties. But this is escalating so fast that I don't even know if we'll be a whole nation by September or October. I believe that Holder and Obama are so intent on busting the country up that there's things coming over this summer that we can't even imagine. I think it's going to be a very hot summer. you got human trafficking coming over the border. There are reports right now that they're bringing Chinese girls over as slave labor to work in restaurants and God knows where else. Top of Drudge Report again, which is linking, of course. He didn't make up the story. He posts the link to the story. More illegals from China crossing in now. You heard me. More illegal immigrants from China crossing the border. Border union officials see more Chinese nationals in the Rio Grande Valley. The postings are now in Spanish and in Mandarin. Si neces necesita ayuda, oprime el botón rojo. Ayuda ilegra que dice aquí and then in Mandarin, which I do not read. Mandarin and other uh, dialects of the Chinese. Mixed them with the Central American illegal immigrants are Chinese nationals. Mixed in with the children are Middle Easterners disguised as uh, Hispanics. Mixed in with the contraband may be fissible material. We are watching the meltdown of the great America. It is not a ball game. It is a nation that is dying in front of our eyes. Dying not of its own accord, but because somebody wants it to die. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. 
Well, as we come to the end of hour number three on the Savage Nation for today, Monday, July 7th, in the year of our Lord, 2014, here is some of the amazing sound production that you may have heard today or may have missed today. The Department of Homeland Security Secretary said, America's priority is not our border, but to do right by the children. Can you believe this? We have to do right by the children. Uh, I have personally encountered enough of them uh, to know that we have to do right by the children. But at the end of the day, in the final analysis, our border is not open to illegal migration, and we will stem the tide. Can you believe that a Homeland Security Secretary of unknown background would say that the children of a foreign country have a higher priority than our borders? Well, sure you can. Meanwhile, a Border Patrol agent, Hector Garza, Hispanic obviously, said the federal government is aiding, abetting, and facilitating illegal aliens. Good for him. He said this is organized. It is an organized situation. He said it's pretty much a rampant abuse of our immigration system. Basically, what we're seeing is, plain and simple, is a rampant abuse of our immigration system. Uh, we have a situation right now where our federal government is pretty much uh, aiding and abetting and facilitating the smuggling of these individuals, of these illegal aliens. Uh, these illegal aliens cross our borders illegally. Uh, we apprehend these, uh, these illegal aliens that pretty much surrender themselves because they know that they're getting a free pass. This is an organized, it's an orchestrated uh, situation. Uh, it's, it's orchestrated by the drug cartels, and, and it's pretty much a, a rampant abuse of our immigration system. That's a Border Patrol agent. Good for him. Stand up to this. Meanwhile, a CNN talker blames the hot weather for the residents' anger over the influx of illegal aliens. I swear to God. I swear to God. You've got a town hall filled with furious people. You've got people stopping Border Patrol from doing their job and, and with trying to get these buses through. Yeah. Is this a boiling point? What is going on? Well, look, I mean, we're, we're hitting the height of summer. And, and that frankly, that when, when the heat rises... Political passions tend to rise. One of the reasons we see town halls hijacked at different recent points in our history. Governor Perry says Obama is failing his constitutional responsibility to protect our border. Good for you, Governor. So as a result, the border between the U.S. and Mexico is less secure today than any time in the recent past. My message to President Obama is to secure this border, Mr. President. Finally, address this issue and secure this border. We have a constitution that clearly enumerates the powers that are supposed to be dealt with by the federal government. McCain said he'll work with Hillary if she is elected. No kidding. You've got to reach across the aisle and work together on certain issues. And I'm not only not embarrassed about that, I'm proud of it. And I respect uh, Hillary Clinton. I may not agree with her. Why don't you try her dress on for size, John? Maybe you could fill in for her while she's globetrotting. Bob Schieffer says to McCain, how is it being a member of a party that won't act? The Congress won't do anything. The Congress has said they're not going to do anything about this. I, I would just like to ask both of you, how do you feel about being members of a body that won't act and a party uh, on a crisis like this? Mr. Schieffer, how is it being a member of a media that has no brains and no conscience? McCain says the success of ISIS in the Middle East is a direct result of the failure of the United States. This is not like a hurricane or an earthquake. This didn't have to happen. This is a failure of the United States policy. And by the way, there still is none that I can discern either a policy or a strategy to handle this situation. No, John, it's a direct result of you enabling them. Those are some of the sound bites from today's Savage Nation. Savage.